Hey, good morning, and welcome to Midas Letter Live. My guest in this segment is Ivan Ross Verana. He is the Vice President of Public Affairs at Hill and Knowlton Strategies. Ivan, welcome back. Uh, thanks very much, James. It's been uh, four years? Four years. Since yeah. we last chatted? It's been a while. Yeah. And the landscape has emerged exactly as neither of us expected. Absolutely. <laughs> you can't predict it. However, this week, legalization has arrived for yes, recreational purposes. Yeah. Although I always find it a bit misleading to call it recreational because it's more attitudinal adjustment than it is recreational. Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. I use it culturally. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's talk about what is going to be happening as of the 17th. Um, the provinces each have their own game plan. Some of them mimic each other to some degree. Others are completely yeah. different from all of the rest. So why don't we just start and go province by province and okay. um, we'll start with British Columbia in the west. We'll move, start on the left and move right. Um, can you buy it in a store in British Columbia? Well, they'll have one store up and running and that'll be a public store. It's supposed to be a mix of public-private. Um, it's amazing to me that the home, you could argue, of Canadian cannabis with all the myriad of dispensaries. You know, mm -hmm. you're from Vancouver originally, you know what it's like to walk down uh, the street I of Vancouver? Interviewed, uh, I interviewed Dana Larson at his dispensary yes, a week ago. Yes, there you go. So only one store legally available in, in the province of BC, which I find fascinating, but I, mm -hmm. it's not the only province that's in this conundrum, right, sure. for uh, legalization. So this is the BC, uh, BC on a cannabis store? That's right. And do they have an, an online presence? Uh, they're supposed to. Uh, supposed to. We'll see how well that uh, is up and running. So and we're basically looking at 10 new websites on the morning of Wednesday the 17th. 13 actually. 13. Thir count the territories, right? Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, right. So of course. <laughs> I forgot. They, I keep forgetting they've been divided in two up there. Yeah. Three. I'm, three. Now. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> okay. So BC, you, can, you can't buy it in a store unless you go to the BCSC and that's got to be in Vancouver. Yep. And you might be able to buy it online you might be able to buy And them. the dispensaries that were illegal have uniformly shut down voluntarily? Uh, of course not. Of course yeah. not. Okay. <laughs> so black market's still alive and well. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alberta. So Alberta, again, that's a private system. Mm -hmm. um, it's, uh, the, the online is public, private system for retail. <coughs> Excuse me, a number of stores are slated to open in uh, uh, Edmonton. Excuse me. Calgary will only have two stores, and as for the rest of the province, it's still rolling out. Hmm. So the two major population centers, again, will have some sort of presence of uh, bricks and mortar, but uh, the issue is today, uh, how easy is it actually to go get it? So Edmonton is leading the way. Okay, so Alberta is more or less emulating their strategy with liquor and beer. That's right. Agencies are allowed to apply and get yeah. credited, and then they can sell it. So that's interesting. So would you categorize Alberta as sort of the leader of the pack at this point? No. Okay. And, cool. and I'll explain why, okay. in a sense, yeah. I'll imagine you'll tell me when I yeah, get the problem. that's that right, is. yeah. All right, and uh, Saskatchewan. So Saskatchewan's an interesting. They had about, uh, about 24 stores awarded by the lottery. It's still not clear how many are, gonna, are up and actually running today. Mm. And the online system is all private, so no government presence whatsoever. So again, I think Saskatchewan, it's going to be difficult to actually, if you're in Regina or Saskatoon, to go out and find out which stores are there, which are actually legal and available to distinguish between mm. uh, dispensaries that are illegal and those right. that are legal. And is there a robust illegal dispensary market in Saskatchewan and Alberta? I know there was at one point. It, I think it's slimmed down a lot, but mm. uh, again, the the online presence thing is what is interesting, right? Because mm -hmm. there's a robust, illegal mm -hmm. online presence right across True. the country. They deliver within an hour. That's right. 99 bucks an ounce. Sometimes it's special. within 30 minutes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> or free. Okay, and Manitoba. Again, Manitoba is another interesting case. Uh, public online system will be up and running, or is up and running, excuse me. Private, again, they awarded a number of stores through an IFP, RFP process, but it's not clear, for instance, how many are going to be up and running in Winnipeg. Mm. So, again, we have this kind of interesting situation where it's not exactly clear. So it'll be black on, market or nothing, probably. Again. Yeah, and you will have legal stores there. It, again, it's all private, so right. it's just not clear how okay. many will be ready for the date. Right. Interesting. 
we should uh, we should do a road trip together. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now tell me about Ontario. We uh, all kind of uh, know well. what kind of mess that is. Ontario. I, I mean, that's the beauty of our democratic system, right? Governments can come in and do what they want to do when they get elected. So we have no stores. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, open. Uh, the online system is supposed to go live, uh, and as we know, Shopify is going to be running that on behalf of the province. Oh. The plan is to have a series of stores, bricks and mortar, up and running for April. Okay. Uh, but they're only accepting applications in December, so companies are going to have to move very fast on that. I see. And it's not clear about uh, you know how many one company can own of these sort of stores, right? Sure. So the province is still trying to figure that so out. So the stores that they're going to be opening up have to be associated, affiliated with an LP? No, not they don't have to. They actually were quite clear in that legislation. They said a licensed producer can only own one store. I see. And usually that's on their land, on their facility property, so that kind of farm gate concept. Mm. So I know there's a lot of concern about that. Mm -hmm. But it's all private uh, bricks and mortar. Really? Public so this online. means that technically Midas Letter could open a store on yes. uh, Queen Street if I Yeah, if you so, so apply. I'll help you with that application. Let's we do, do it. <laughs> okay, another episode. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> moving on to Quebec. So Quebec is, uh, again, another fascinating province. You know, 7 million people, 12 stores open. Hmm. Uh, That's pretty good compared to the rest of them. It's not, yeah, it's not bad at all. And they say they're going to have 17 up and running by, and these are publicly owned stores by sometime in November. Hmm. So we have to wait and see publicly how they owned. Yeah. So the, the province is going to run. Yeah. Them. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Now, okay, let's, let's keep going. Uh, yeah. In Quebec, do they have a large black market? Uh, well, again, one could argue, and not as, it's, nothing compares to uh, Vancouver, B.C. overall. Right. Uh, you know, in Montreal, having, you know, I live in Ottawa, I've been in Montreal quite a lot. There used to be a number of dispensaries in Montreal, but it seems I haven't seen that presence as obvious as it once mm -hmm. used to be. Well, I've seen them shutting them down here yes. over the last couple of weeks yeah. rather aggressively. Yeah. Um, New Brunswick? So, New Brunswick to me is my favorite province when it comes to this. They've, uh, for, uh, you know, a population of about a million people, They've also got uh, 12 stores up and running, or, and I think that's actually increasing to 20. Mm. So given, you know, they've really gone after that quite aggressively. And again, it's uh, uh, publicly owned stores, publicly owned uh, retail. So they're probably one of the best provinces that are set, uh, that have met this deadline and they're up and running. Really? That's yeah. interesting. Okay, what about Newfoundland and Labrador? So Newfoundland and Labrador, they have plans for 30 stores uh, right across the province. And they, they're, those are private stores. They're opening to uh, allowing uh, an interesting distribution system if it doesn't cover off the, the entire island and Labrador, given how large it is. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at sort of different uh, mixes out there. Okay. Prince Edward Island? Now, that's another one of my favorite provinces because, you you know, per capita, they've got three stores opening with a fourth one coming online. So, you know, that's a store serving about 100,000 people. Wow. So not so bad. That's <laughs> and you can cross the island, I think, and uh, I don't want to offend any PEIers, but uh, I think you can get across the island in about three hours, right? Yeah. So that's not bad. Yeah. Uh, the Northwest Territories? Uh, so no stores in the Northwest Territories. It's all online right now. Hmm. Probably they're going to be needed to deliver by drone. Yeah, maybe, yeah. <laughs> And they are open now. It was supposed to be public, but they are looking at a private model. They're thinking okay. too, yeah. And Nunavut? Nunavut, none. All online. All online, Yukon. Yukon, one store in Whitehorse. One store in Whitehorse. Yeah. Okay, so it sounds to me like the black market entities who are online are going to be busy on Wednesday. I think so. <laughs> Let's see if we can get one of them in here for an yeah. interview. Okay, now here's a question that, again, we're just going to have to run through the provinces because this issue is also not uniform. And that is the ability to grow four plants per family, per right. household? Per household. Okay. And so I know that Ontario, on Wednesday, I have clones coming and they're going to get planted. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. good. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> well, how could I not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, essentially, I think it breaks down to, I think it was Manitoba and Quebec were the only provinces that said they weren't going to allow that. Manitoba and Quebec, yeah, right. Yeah, but I think that's, they're opening themselves for a bit of a challenge there mm -hmm. uh, in the court system because it, even though this... It's a recreational distribution system. Provinces have for purview over that. What's not clear is how it crosses the line into medical. Because medical, you're allowed to grow up to four mm -hmm. plants, right? Uh, so uh, what was not clear to me anyway, when I looked at the legislation in Quebec and in Manitoba, is if you would be allowed to do that for medical purposes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Um, interesting. So in your opinion, or from where, from where you sit, do yeah. you think that, uh, you know, that that there's going to be a meaningful disruption of the black market at the outset, and if not at the outset, when? 
<clears throat> well, I do actually think there will be a bit of a disruption overall. Um, it, it won't be to meet people's expectations because I think they're a little bit unrealistic. I know people said, okay, once it happens, you know, the black market needs to disappear. Well, uh, way back when, uh, when alcohol was legalized, that didn't happen overnight. Uh, different times, obviously different uh, systems in place. Mm -hmm. So it will take time, but slowly overall, I think you'll start seeing a decrease. I think, uh, you know, police forces across the country are now uh, prepared to be able to shut down at least dispensaries. The online presence will be of a big concern for uh, uh, police forces across the country. Uh, so uh, I think there's lots of action that we don't know about happening, but it's not going to happen overnight. Sure. Okay, what about the limitations on quantity? How much can you buy in a given day, in a given session, over the course of a year? Are there limitations? There, yeah, every single province, with the exception of Quebec, which is really fascinating, it's 30 grams. Okay. Interesting thing is, though, if I go to one store and I buy 30 grams, what's to stop me from going to another store in Alberta and getting another 30 grams sure. maximum, right? They're, they're not gonna ask for proof that you've purchased, you don't need an authorization card. Uh, if you do get stopped by a police officer and you've got 60 in your car, then there's going to be an issue. Mm. Um, of course, they can't uh, come into your home to do that. Quebec, what they're saying is you can have in your home stored up to 150 grams. Hmm. So that's the one province that's interesting. That's uh, And so in the provinces now, if you can grow four plants in your house, and I happen to know that you can uh, you could yield out, uh, you could yield up to 450 grams per plant, per plant. of dried premium flour. Yeah. Now, if you're traveling across, going to visit Auntie May in Newfoundland, what you're bringing her a bag of yeah. <laughs> care package, <laughs> I, how are they going to deal with it if you can say, well, no, this is what I've grown well within my rights? Well, I, I think that's a great sort of issue. I, I would suggest you travel with the 30 grams for now, mm. even though you might have the but right that's to. that's not enough. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> then you have to go to the government-run store right. or the private store top in that up. province to top up. Okay, yeah. so interesting. And uh, now, the age that you have to be across the country? So, in every single province, again, except Quebec, it's 19. Quebec, it's 18, but with the election of the new government in Quebec, they've mused about changing that to be 21. 21. Yeah, so it, it follows all the liquor laws, essentially, across mm. the country. So, eight, 19 is the, is the age right mm. across all the provinces. 18 in Quebec, but uh, we'll see how quickly this uh, new government in Quebec will be able to change that and if they still want to do that. You bet. Now, what about where you can, where you're allowed to smoke it? Okay. So now we don't have a pattern to fall whatsoever, okay. right? I, you know, it's, it's um, generally most of the provinces follow the rules about where you can actually smoke a cigarette, a tobacco product. However, what we're seeing is municipalities are getting involved in this debate. So in uh, Halifax, for instance, right now, they are saying, no tobacco can be smoked anywhere on the streets. And that then applies to cannabis, which is fascinating, right? Hmm. They are allowing restaurants to apply for a designated area on tobacco. We don't know if that's gonna apply to cannabis yet, but that's the type of things that you're starting to deal, deal with. Uh, in Ottawa, my hometown, Algonquin College said, you can't smoke on campus anymore, anywhere. Outdoors, indoors, whatever. And they said, uh, we came up with this law because it was for um, cannabis. So in many respects, if you think about it, I mean, in Vancouver for the last five years, you've been able to more or less walk down the street puffing a joint yeah. and walk right by a cop. He's not going to say anything. Yeah. And generally, when you go to college and school to slip out into the smoking area and yeah. honk, honk back a doob is uh, a rite of passage, one yes. might argue. And so especially when it comes to establishments where people drink, bars, uh, you know, the, going outside. the ritual of going out for a yeah. reefer is, uh, you in know, in the dead of winter. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, in the, dead of, in the worst of conditions. Yeah. So does this mean that we've actually got a situation where the cops are going to be busting people left, right and center for doing what they've always been doing their whole lives? Well, uh, that's an excellent question and I hope not in that sense because, it, I mean, I think they need to apply their resources somewhere else mm -hmm. about worrying about whether people are smoking on the street or so forth. I know people will... Uh, generally, all the rules follow, you know, you can't smoke near a school, you can't smoke near a playground. I think those rules are reasonable, but to try to be able to control that behavior, and I, I'm not a, uh, a fan of smoking whatsoever, uh, I don't do it, but, uh, you know, again, it, there's a bit where it crosses the line, right? So maybe, maybe it's the role for bylaw officers to hand out a ticket hmm. as opposed to police. Right. Uh, so I wonder how that is going to do it, and I guess the key thing that I keep on uh, talking about when I do things like this is if when government's coming up with these policies and police forces, I hope 
that fine, you've got it, you want to try it, but adaptability has to be the key as to what you learn and, and don't learn and what things are, are the hard lessons. And so hopefully that will change over time. Mm -hmm. All right, well that's, uh, that's great insight, Ivan. I thank you for your participation. We'll come back to you again and have you back sooner so. than four years. Okay, well that's great. Thanks very much, thank James. Thank you.